This is a HeadGum Podcast. Where would you like? Ask your ask my guests to choose. You can sit in the couch or the swivel chair. No, they're both so great. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'll do All this. right, sweet. Yeah. Now here's something. Yeah. You're the first person to take the couch. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Out of like three other people, five other people. A hundred and eight. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, uh, I really was thinking of that, and then oh look at this. I like how. <laughs> Well, I mean, you're welcome to sit here. That's no, fine. I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like that I can see my uh, uh, yeah. reminder. Um, uh, I'm going to yeah. move this. Fine. I can see you. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay, I, great. I think I decided that this was easier. Uh, you know what I don't like is the pillow, and I've never really understood. I know it's decorative, but it's not functional, I think. No. Unless you want to put it on here? I have a lot of space. Yeah. Um, I... I find the pillows to be unnecessary and uh, cumbersome and my uh, oh you haven't been to our house have you, have you been I there? have but not in a while so um, like, I don't know if you I my mean assuming it's the of... same place yeah yeah you have a brownstone right yeah it's not um, uh, I mean we had the whole thing actually removed you know how you can move a house yeah. We had the whole thing. Swap with the one next door. Yes, exactly. Well, the one next door, I don't know where it went to, Austin, Texas or something like that. And we, ours just uh, slid over. Although yeah. it didn't slide. It was a cumbersome thing. It cost millions of dollars. And, and not really, the view isn't crazy different, you know. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. You I, can see really... Mount Washington. <laughs> yes. From that. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> We're literally 10 feet away and I can see Mount Washington. I can see the arch in St. Louis. <laughs> it's great. The old man on the mountain. Well, he's not there anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think his yeah, it's like nose fell off or something. So, it's just rocks. Um, and what do you got coming up? In, in general? Yeah. I like nothing. Meaning like I'm doing like a handful of shows. Like I just did some shows. Oh, wait. That's not true. Um, my label, Glazer, has an album coming out and I'm coming oh, right here on. to do uh his show it's like a dog themed show his album is is a uh, meditation for dogs it's <laughs> okay. a half it's like a half hour meditation for animals it's very funny um is it just him or dogs. doing uh... it's just him but then it's like it turns into a bit of an adventure oh that's but cool. it's him talking calmly remaining hey, wait a minute remain you're calm. when you say your label i started me and julie and Aditi. i don't know if you know her uh, started a small comedy label to put out records. Oh, that's like we put out Derek's record. You maybe oh, posted yes, about course, it. Of course, so of we course. So we put out Derek's record, Maeve Higgins' record. We're oh, about to put out Glazers and Bob Col Bobcats. We put out Bobcats. Oh, that's record. awesome. What's it and, called? Uh, Pretty Good Friends Records. Oh, great. And then Sub Pop does distribution. I was going to ask if uh, Sub Pop was involved. Yes. So yeah, they, that's like, really do distribution, smart. So it's fun. So yeah. So I in fact have that. Uh, coming up, Glazer's show. That's great. Is that yeah. was that your idea? Just the label? Yeah. I feel like me and Julie for a long time, you know, especially since we're not here, but like loved doing like the festival and loved doing stuff and putting like working with friends. Yeah, yeah. So it basically was like, how can we without, you know, putting on these shows still do that? And this was kind of a fun way to do it. And we'd always sort of wanted to. That's great. Yeah. And and the it's Glazer doing a live show to promote sort of like the... a promote like an album release. Well, but I have think like them... a dog themed album release. I don't actually, I'm not producing the show, so I don't like, don't know the details. You stop than... caring. Uh, once the record was finished. Once, once it's done. Yeah. You check out. Yeah. I listen to it and I go, like, I give a thumbs up. <laughs> and then you're on your uh, yacht. Yeah. yeah. You get and then it. I leave a message for David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what is the message? Just John Glazer has an album. <laughs> Hi, we've never met. Uh, John Glazer has an album. Uh, it's a meditation for dogs. Good night. Okay. Um, yeah. You, so you assume he's going to get the message in the evening? <laughs> I do. I okay. do. Or, I mean, or that he's going to go to sleep right after he gets the message either way. Right. Maybe you can, I mean, there's something, if you could kind of uh, merge the idea of meditation and good night. Yes. Is almost like a hypnotic response. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a great power if you, if just by you saying good night to somebody... They would just fall asleep. Yeah. How come that's 
I think that is a, a thing. superpower. Is That's, it? That's I think like hip hip hip. Isn't that what? Uh, no, but you would have to pre hypnotize people. I'm saying if your superpower, Marvel, oh, you don't have to Marvel do, Universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and a guy just goes good night. Oh, like and Mr. Then, Sleepy, like yeah. his name was Mister Sleepy. Yeah, yeah. tired yeah. eyes, tired eyes, and uh, and Thanos he, defeated by <laughs> tired eyes, little old Thanos. And Can't you could snap uh, when you're sleepy. <laughs> You could cast, oh, I don't know, Bob Balaban, maybe, I think oh would be God. good. Tom Wilkinson. Yeah. Uh, Alfred Molina, you know. Uh, he's so already Doc Ock. All right. No, we can't have Alfred. Uh, but so somebody um, in the Marvel unit. Yeah, a new guy. Uh, uh, oh, who would be a nice sleepy. Mark Ruffalo. No, he's the Hulk. Oh. Uh, you could only be Chris Evans. Oh, Chris Evans, no. Uh, Brie Larson, no. Um, uh what about Anthony Michael Hall? What's he doing? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, maybe get him for Mr. Diane Feinstein. Um, Diane Feinstein. Yeah. No. Hang on a second. E Emma, mm -hmm. look up uh, Diana Feinstein dead. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. I want to. Uh, I want to pursue this a little bit more so you're so it so that's your power and you could if you had a public address system you had a mic um yeah, yeah. right you and you could just go good night and then like a couple blocks go to sleep go to sleep i'm so not convinced that that isn't a thing already like i'm like it feels like in some but you would have to pre-hypnotize somebody i'm talking about oh, going no, no, i don't mean in the real world i mean oh. like there's already i bet like i bet it's not called mr sleepy but i bet he is called like the sleep maker. Oh, really? I don't know. I've never heard of him. I think, I think you think that it might exist. I'm guessing this because it's such an obvious idea. Like, why haven't they done it yet? Yes. Right. That's true. That uh, could be. Yeah. Um, we'd have to call Patton and ask. Yes, Patton would know. <laughs> you feel um, like that is in 1963. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Spider-Man did, in fact, fight yeah. Dr. Sleepy. Yeah, the old EC comics. Uh, anyway. Uh, we're not, has this begun? Has this not begun? How does this work? Uh, would you like to start? Oh, I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you want to get started? We Because we started as soon as we entered the room. Sure. Okay. So we're, we're in, we're. In the middle. We're, we're in really, the, this is halfway. Not even the middle, because we have a little bit more to do, but we're, yeah. we're way into the first quarter. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And the score is 10 to 7. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> well, I could tell you who's got 10, right. who's got 7. Um. All right. Is there anything you would like to? I we talked about Glazer's uh, album. Uh, yeah. Anything you want to promote that might be coming up? I mean, I think that's sort of that's the it? label and that okay. Derek's album. You know, Derek Brown. Derek Brown. Very uh, funny. His album interesting, just, smart. Yeah. Uh, poet comic. Yeah. Is it fair to call him a comic? It's unfair, but we should. No. Uh, <laughs> I think it's unfair to other comics and other poets and other poets. Um, yeah, he is a poet comic. He's a poet yeah. comic. He. He's a funny poet. He's a funny uh, poetic. He is, funny. Yeah, yeah. And he is is a funny storyteller poet. I don't mm -hmm. know how you would, you know. He is a mix of stand up and poetry. Um, Eugene, will you tell the folks, uh, listening or watching, uh, how we met? We first met. I think we first met through actually Brendan Small. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I ask everybody because I don't remember. That's why I ask that, you to that tell checks me. Out. So um, we first met because I used to live in Boston and Brendan, I think, was already in LA. No, he was in, he must have been in Boston still and you were coming to play the Comedy Connection. Oh gosh, and, that's going way back. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So it's, oh, no it must kidding. be 99, 2000. 2000, it must be 2000 because I think I lived here. So he was going to open for you the the newer connection, right? The, the no, the, the Faneuil Hall one. That's what I, the new connection essentially. I thought is the like, last time I worked there was when I opened for Gallagher too and stole all his batteries. I am pretty sure the last time you worked there is the time uh, that that Brendan opened for you. I think it must be two thousand. So it must have been I don't know. Is it November two thousand? Uh, this like or hmm. two thousand one? But like. February or something um, okay. because you had not yet moved to New York or you were about to or you had like yeah I didn't so move here till 2001 spring of 2001 okay so so then somewhere around that time I think you played Boston Brendan was like I'm opening for David Cross if you want to come 
So oh, I came wow. back to Boston and saw you. I think you two shows probably and yeah, hung out and then, and then that was how we sort of first met. And I think, oh then, cool. Then sort of in New York, you know. I thought it was. I, I thought I was a. Uh, uh, assuming it was in new york i mean in a sense that's like where like i think like where, where we started hanging, hanging out and, yeah, and yeah. doing shows together yeah. yes exactly um i'm surprised that they had me back at well i guess at that point i was kind of a name yeah but yeah they had you be, oh, what did you do because you stole gallagher's did you say batteries I, oh, yeah a gallagher too mean sorry bro yeah uh he had it was um uh, so Gallagher 2, uh, for those of you who don't know, was, uh, uh, I'll give you a brief history. So Gallagher, the famous uh, comedian Gallagher, um, has a brother who looks like almost exactly like him, uh, who was a roofer in Florida. And Gallagher, very, very savvy businessman, sa businessman said, hey, I can't do these old bits anymore. You know, um, I have all these jokes. Um, why don't you go out there as Gallagher too and you can do <clears throat> you can do all my my set and you take 70% of the money and I'll take 30% or whatever the the breakdown. thing was breakdown yeah. was and so he did it for years and he would go to clubs and uh and it would and he looks like Gallagher and he did not I think they had a big falling out because he didn't try to um he he wasn't that clear that it was Gallagher two. It'd be like a Roman numeral two, but it was so close to get like he was. He tried to pretend he, he, was, he was trying the real to trick Gallag people. Yeah. yeah, so people were going, "Holy shit! It's only forty five dollars to go see Gallagher at the uh, comedy Boston Comedy Club, a you know relatively small club." Yeah, yeah. And um, and then he just he sounds like him. He looks like him. He dressed like him, and. Uh, but I think they had a falling out because he was kind of trying to subvert that. But uh, anyway, he did a week, and for some reason, there must, I mean, literally every other comedian was not available. So they had me open up. And, uh, and as you might imagine, my material does, is, does not go well with Gallagher 2's audience. No. And he was really uh, not pleasant. I, I wouldn't say he was mean, but he was just sort of grouchy and grumpy and uh and the act is just Gallagher's I mean, act ridiculous is it done as well as poorly I don't know he if just sort of right. trots it out there and he's like you know he has his things and so uh, he has all these things that are operated so we'll have like a I remember he had a uh uh seagull on a long uh, like a, a a good like six foot pole right yep and he had a trigger at the base of it, and uh, and um, and he was like, I can't remember what this dumb joke was like. Hey, man, these 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 birds will eat your French fries. They want more, you know, and they just shit on you, whatever. And he had the bird, and and everybody is. Um, oh, here's the other thing. <laughs> you have to you have to picture this. Um, they lined the club with plastic sheeting, and part of the advertisement was bring uh bring your raincoat yeah so because he's gonna smash the watermelons and uh yep and so they had they also had plastic sheeting like big you know reams of like industrial <laughs> construction site plastic sheeting for like the first three rows on on you know the middle and the sides and uh even the walls but i think the walls was just more there for like oh boy <laughs> you know right. someone's gonna get sticky and uh and then so he had these different things. I think he had a Bart doll at some point, Bart Simpson. Yep. And he had a he had the so the seagull had a can of shaving cream, and somehow when he pulled the trigger, this is a, a fairly long pull because it had to reach out to people, and he would just sort of move it like this, and it would shit on you know quote unquote oh, shit on I people. See. Yep, yep. And yep. then and people were delighted. Yeah, oh, yeah. this is the most clever, funniest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's just uh, uh, comedy is finally enlightening. Become what it could be. Yes, <laughs> yes. Finally, thank you, Gallagher too. Thank you, Gallagher's twin. And and then uh, he yeah, th and 
I remember the seagull, but there were, and I remember the Bart Simpson doll, but there were multiple things that he would have like hover o- over the audience and eat shit on them or vomit on them or whatever the yeah, thing yeah, was. Yeah. And it would be shaving cream or oatmeal or who knows. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, so I jerked off into the seagull. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I should. Now I'm thinking about it. That's what I should have done. But, uh, he had this, um, uh, like a musician's, uh, what you you know, like not luggage, but like a oh, whole like a case, a case with yeah. that opened up into like three sides, big, like you know, like literally. How some people would carry rifles, but he carried props. <laughs> yeah, he well or guitars, he, uh, comedy guns, comedy you know, guns. laugh, yes. laugh, laugh, AK forty sevens, and yeah. um, uh, and. And it would like try, you know, had try and it had all this stuff in it, various things and like duplicates of the seagull and all these things. And he had uh, a whole big plastic bin of like 30 batteries that, you know, like big C or D's that would, I guess, go in all these poles or whatever. And every uh, show got progressively worse for me, which has happened before. And they would kind of cut my time down to, you know, basically nothing. And he was getting, he was irritated at me. He didn't like me. He didn't like, um, and I understand that. You know, they got a bad, they got the wrong guy to open, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, but he was just. gotten Gallagher one. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, or Gallagher three. Well, yeah. let's, let's go find a Gallagher three. But he three. smashes like small stuff, so it doesn't take away from the punch. <laughs> well, he <laughs> just makes food. He, he makes fruit salad, and salad. it's not that exciting. So yeah. he'll, he'll slice the watermelon, dice it up, yeah, make yeah. a lovely, a lovely little melange yeah. with some berries in it, make a smoothie. Gallagher 4 makes a smoothie. Yes, and 5 makes overnight <laughs> oats. And it is something to see. Oh, the Gallagher family. Um, yeah, they went in reverse order. The first guy, why are you, you're destroying all the food. Yeah, but it's funny. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll be Gallagher 2 and I won't destroy the food as my, I'll do smaller food. Oh, yeah. Gallagher 3, I'm actually going to cook cook with yeah. this. And uh, and then Gallagher 6 just makes compost. Uh, and and so he was, he as I said, he was uh, like kind of grouchy, grumpy uh, from the outset and just, just sort of short and, and clearly doesn't want to be there, doesn't enjoy it at all, doesn't enjoy doing stand-up, doesn't enjoy, it's all this kind of perfunctory, uh, I gotta go do, he was, he was just sour, you know, and as the week progressed, uh, you know, his distaste for me became clear, and as I said, I, I understand it, I'm the, I was not, I should not have opened up, but I hate I hated everything he represented, and I hated everything. I hated watching that audience. Uh, and, and where was this? Is this Boston? Com- the comedy, comedy connection. connection. Right, yeah. right, right. That's why I thought it was the. Yeah, I thought yeah, that the was the last connection. time I was right, there. Right, right. Of I was course. surprised that I was asked back, yeah, yeah. but um, and then I stole all of his. I got a bag and just took all of his batteries, and because we had you know between two shows, shows, yeah, I took everything and. Uh, so what was hit? What happened? Is he on stage going? I need D batteries. <laughs> I don't know. I left. I mean, I left and didn't come back. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what happened. They might not have known you stole all the batteries, but also they invited you back as a headliner. So it's probably years later. Years later. Yeah, yeah this yeah. would have been. This was when like I was still living there. Yeah, something. 89, 89, 89 right? Something so like yeah, that. and what I'm describing is not is a decade later. Yeah. So yeah, by that point, they, I'm sure, didn't recall. Yeah. It was all a new new group of people. Surprise there wasn't a protest, <laughs> you know. Yeah. By all the people that had been wronged. From that show. Yeah, from that show. Oh. Um, Eugene Merman, what is the saddest thing you've ever heard? Take your time. Oh, God. I don't know. Think about it. We can come back to it. I mean, it's funny. It's like you think of things and then, um, like, I don't know. Do I know a sadder thing? Like, mm-hmm. um, one thing that comes to mind, and I don't know if it's the saddest exactly, um, but being told a story um, about my dad, um, you know, he had sort of fled during like the Holocaust. And um, uh, a cousin of his 
recently telling us that like they survived off of boiled poison ivy. Wow. So like that they ate like potato peels and then boiled poison ivy. And it was in Russian. And then my brother translated and it was like, because I don't know the words for poison yeah. ivy. And I was, he was like, yeah, it's boiled poison ivy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it was like, so I don't know, like, have I heard a sadder thing? Like, I, maybe, I, but that's like, yeah. Yeah. I pretty. um did, uh, I, I'm, I'm remiss in not remembering the exact uh, the name of the a Holocaust memory uh, Emma yeah. Google uh, uh, celebrities who read letters from Holocaust victims and uh, and find my rating um, <laughs> I did uh, it was very serious this thing I did. Yeah, yeah. and uh, um, and I read a couple stories and uh, in their voices and it was you have to keep reminding yourself, oh, this is real. This isn't made up. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. like, have you ever read The Painted Bird? No. Zinsky? No. It's, it's rough, man. It's about a boy who, uh, um, you know, witnesses uh, a lot of trauma in World War II and, and becomes mute. And uh, um, it's just, you know, devastating. But uh, yeah, these stories, like you can't, believe it it uh yeah yes it's like and it, it's funny because it's like obviously there's like i don't know there's something about like the specificity of a certain thing that isn't like necessarily like the worst thing you could hear about just sort of like this it's like well, so sad I, in the in the seizure of leningrad they uh uh people were surviving on books they were eating books mm -hmm. eating paper and boiling and eating the glue or drinking the yeah. binding yeah the my glue. grandfather was I think in charge of the like structural, uh, he was a, he was in the army, in charge of like the structure of Leningrad, of the protection of Leningrad, like the yeah. blockade, yeah. God, it's yeah. crazy, crazy, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and we, we bitch about the most trivial shit, it's amazing. I mean, look, I don't like getting a shitty salad. <laughs> I mean, this is, what, you gotta this, take this everyone's is the, life is what, what it's it relative. is. Yeah, it's relative, yeah, it's relative. Yeah. One man's, surviving by drinking and eating boiled poison ivy is another man's uh cob salad with uh yeah this is this is egg this is poached not this free range poached. turkey yeah exactly yeah what do you mean this isn't free range yeah so yeah uh that's a pretty sad sad that's extremely sad what, what about you has anyone asked you no what's um, one of the saddest things? well this is the you know that's not how this works here oh, okay uh, sorry sorry um, to I think I think the saddest thing, that, and there, I I will say there are sadder things. Like yes, your that's sadder than what uh, the thing that caused me caused me the most sadness uh, was uh, I was nine years old and uh, we were in Syracuse, New York, and uh, and my we were at one of the lowest points uh mm -hmm. the family uh economically and uh um and i was uh i was so syracuse during the winter and there's this massive snowstorm and i was selling greeting cards like i had you know on the back of comic books you could sell remember sell grit it was like a newspaper yeah i don't know that might have been before your time but yeah. um you could order these things and then if you sold enough whatever it was uh this happened to be greeting cards uh, you would get like a watch if you, uh, or t these t-shirts, yeah. whatever you, you could. So you were selling them for money that you would mail away? No, you would get like the watch. It would, it, if you, it, up to like the back of like, you know, uh, but, comic book. But when you sold it, what happened? Did someone give you money? Yeah. You would get like a check or, and then you would oh, give it to the company um, I can't remember exactly how it worked. There was a little yeah, bit yeah. of paperwork that my mom helped me with, but you'd fill some stuff out or you were whatever it was. And I was in the neighborhood that I was living in and I was going door to door and it's snowing. We were in the snow, but it's night and it's freezing. And, and, uh, a couple people took pity on me, you know, and I, and I sensed that, but that was fine. I was able to, and I, and I, uh, uh, 
you know, probably sold like two things agree. I was probably out there for like an hour just going door to door. And uh and and came back home and uh and my mom said uh so so in the living room was uh my dad, my mom and one of my sisters. My other sister was somewhere else. And um and my mom said we lost a member of the family today. And my sister wasn't there. And I was like, what? Uh, where's, what? What happened? And then uh, I knew my dog had been sick. And I'd grown up with my dog. This is, uh, his name was Charlie Brown. And he, when he, I think he was three months old when I was born or I was three months when we got him, something like that. But I, he was there the whole time. And uh, they had to put him down. Uh, and, and I think, so I, I realized it wasn't my sister, my little sister, uh, but then I realized it was my dog who, uh, I had a much closer relationship with. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and I think it was the whole, the, 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 you know, starting to understand, like our situation was never good, but when you're a kid and you're able to amuse yourself and laugh and and find yeah. you could play with a rusty can, whatever yeah, you yeah. can. But as you get older and you're co I constantly moved, I was never in one place for more than a year. New school, new town, whatever, and and I think just the I was starting to understand like this is my lot in life, and and you know. I just went door to door in a snowstorm and, you know, for an hour and I'm freezing and we have no money. And we were like, we were like government cheese and getting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we literally got a check from the Salvation Army one Christmas for, to get toys. <laughs> like we were that bad off and, uh, wow. and, uh, powdered milk, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and then just to lose, lose my dog to come into that. And it, it was just, uh that was too much you know yeah, yeah. and it was yeah. uh and i just I, I you know i was crying about that but i was crying about a lot of things you know but i think that uh we lost a member of the family today is uh not the way to phrase it first of all not that. <laughs> yeah well i don't think she realized julie was out of the room but uh <laughs> uh it at was... least say how many legs it has <laughs> So I would say that yeah. was uh, the, one of the sad. It's funny that reminds me of I had a dog. We got we had a dog, um, and my parents were away. You know, they went on a trip somewhere, and were they spying? They were, sp but for Canada, no. Uh, <laughs> they were on a a trip, and then uh, you know somebody rang the bell, and and my dog uh, Katie. I had two dogs named Katie. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, and uh, was hit by a car, and so my neighbors drove oh. me in oh. the back seat with a dog that had been hit by a car. Oh my god! To the vet. It took about forty-five minutes. Oh and, my god! Uh, the, how how old were you? I mean, I was in. I think I was in sixth grade. Third, oh. I was either in third grade or sixth grade. Oh god. Um. Oh, that's and, awful. Yeah, and so we're driving, and we get there, and then we bring him to the vet. Oh. And, you know, it's kind of a long drive because it's, you know, I know, it wasn't like it was not like a 24 hour like nearby vet. And then also I, they were taking their time. It's, it's oh, lovely yeah, it was, up they there. They took a it's, scenic route. It was yeah, through like the beautiful. suburbs. Beautiful stuff. It's Lincoln. beautiful. Ooh, what's yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. Did you stop and get a uh, like. A smoothie? Yeah. Yes. It was, it was from the first, yeah, frat place in all of New England. We stopped. Uh, we went to Caldor. I brought a drum machine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,. Kenny, uh, listen to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> You'll be okay. And then um, we, uh, then I, you know, we left the dog, and then I got home, and I called them, and they were like, oh, we couldn't God, save the that's dog. That's awful. But then the, at least the nice thing is the next day when I went to school, there was a little girl who was like, your dog committed suicide because it didn't love you. It's, wow. Is what that's what said kind of brilliant yeah that's yeah yeah it's awful. like i mean it's that's like, awful in a very yeah, yeah. specific certain evil way yes and what's she doing now i don't know she went to harvard though mm. Mm. probably so a it's prosecutor 
Yeah, probably maybe she, she probably works at a kill shelter. <laughs> yeah. Doing nonprofit stuff. Um, well, that really, uh, yeah, I'm not going to ask that question again. Why not? Uh, it's, it doesn't promote anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, that, I, I guess I should do the ad here. Where, where, this one? Yeah. This me? All right. Um, hey folks, this is David Cross at Senses Working Overtime. Say, have you uh, been struggling with your sleep lately? Have you suffered trauma? Has your dog died and you didn't get the drum machine you wanted? Well, that's why there's Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not real. It's not a real thing. Laffy I mean, Laffy Taffy is I'm real. I'm sure. It's not I real. understand that you are not sponsored by something that's meant to take you out of a real funk. <laughs> like Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you lost a, m a member of your family? Well, Laffy Taffy is the quickest <laughs> smile producer. Yeah. <laughs> Except for banana. For some yeah. reason, banana it's delicious, but banana doesn't promote the smiles that the other flavors of Laffy Taffy does. So for this particular thing, Laffy Taffy, but not banana. Sold. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, Fresh. Whether you're trying whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like, delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. Give HelloFresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week. Each Hello Fresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients, and everything arrives pre portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. <laughs> Ditch the meal planning blues and the grocery store run with quick, convenient recipes delivered right to you. Just choose your meals and select your delivery date. Hello Fresh handles the meal planning and shopping. All you have to do is open your weekly box of fresh pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes to get cooking. Go to hellofresh.com slash census free and use code census free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash census free with code census free america's number one meal kit eugene merman <laughs> what is the fanciest thing you've ever tasted oh the fanciest thing i've ever tasted <laughs> a golden retriever no uh <laughs> <laughs> The delicate hair. Uh, no, I. Uh, God, the fanciest thing. Again, it's like you. You know, my my guess is it is a tiny, uh, like black caviar sandwich. Maybe that it was delicious. I I, I would think sam uh, like. I love like, like a Pullman's bread. What kind of sandwich? Like that sa sandwich meaning like I don't know. Like they made the little tiny delicious bread. I I I don't know. Oh, like a blini. No, like, no. no bread, like, uh, it seems like, like, imagine a hamburger shrunk, yeah. and then the bread is amazing, because it's made by someone who's great at bread, right. and then inside is probably, like, a little butter, and, uh, that sounds pretty you know, fancy, yeah, that's pretty fancy, and then I will say there's, like, a, there's a, there's a restaurant in, um, uh, Lynn, that's, mm -hmm. like, uh, Massachusetts, this, Lynn, Massachusetts, yes, that has a tasting menu that's that's amazing. Um, oh, wow. It's called Nightshade Noodle Bar, and they have had things that are like maybe like a lobster and a custardy thing or something that's like very delicious. I can tell your uh, um, by your answers that you're not very sophisticated, and you're probably yeah. like just working class. I mostly eat it out of a shoe. Like I'll take <laughs> anything nice and I'll put it in a shoe, so that if someone <laughs> calls me bourgeois, yeah. like would. Would an actual oh, bourgeois yeah. person get out of their own shoe? <laughs> no. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Now, you you and I uh, both have kids, one kid, roughly the same age. I think yeah. uh, uh, 
your son is a little older, yeah? Yeah, I believe so. But like, yeah, like like half a year or something. Yeah. Year. Um, oh, then happy birthday to him. Uh, <laughs> And as of as of uh, when this airs, um, oh. <laughs> I try to air, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, release each show on a child's birthday. Great, um, yeah. And I try to mention holidays and in interviews so that it's clear that it's uh, uh, being released at the wrong time. Right. So, um, happy Valentine's Day, David. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was. It, it came so quick after Veterans Day. You know. <laughs> um, I mean, it's. I don't remember it being that. Close after, it's like Veterans Day and then the next day is Valentine's Day. Um, but I mean, everybody we, celebrates different. You, oh, you're on a Jewish calendar. <laughs> that's right. Yes. This, that's why I was three minutes late. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, and and wh wh how, do, how do Jews feel about Valentine's Day? I think in America they love it. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, I think, uh, you know, they love romance. I when mean, do they celebrate? The original romantics is, I think, what... <laughs> what they're called i'm not sure about that but I don't um know. that is a gruff or gruff romantic yeah um there I, are I, roses i took them from the ground I, I i love the uh gruff romantic movement and music back in the i guess kind of late 70s early 80s mm -hmm. um yeah it's kind of a british thing but not all of britain just a um uh, isle of wight um where that <laughs> the festival yeah started and remained, never crossed the channel. But, um, uh, kids? Yeah, kids. What, we have uh, the kids of the same age. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and we had a, a, a kind of, a really rough weekend. Uh, it all turned out okay, but, uh, she was, ho my daughter was hosting her first, uh, sleepover. Mm -hmm. Um, with, uh, you know, she's got, you know, three best friends and this is her best, best friend. And, um, and her best friend did not, uh, you know, was all for it, was excited about it. Yep. Uh, but when it came time to, go uh, to go to sleep, she really, you know, was, uh, upset and, uh, a yep. lot of big feelings about missing mommy and daddy and her brother. And she didn't like it and she couldn't go to sleep and she wanted, to, uh, um, you know, she wanted to go home and, uh, and my daughter took that personally yep. and it was, uh, difficult, mm -hmm. uh, to say the least and, um, lots of hysterical crying and, and, and what started with like, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn my, uh, that was my phone. I forgot to, uh, turn that on silent. I apologize. Um, um. And what started with uh, kind of sort of emotional blackmail, like if you leave, if you don't sleep over tonight, I'm never going to be your friend again. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, her parents can pick her up. This is pretty late too at this point. Um, and, uh, and then she just started crying hysterically and like the, the kind of sobbing, yeah, heaving yeah. kind of like, <laughs> you know, really, really upset. And then it, that turned into, I failed. I feel it was all on her and um um they came over the next morning yesterday morning for we had bagels and locks and stuff and we had a nice breakfast and everything was fine um but I'm wondering if you've experienced that and we're trying to tell her anecdotal things about so what I've experienced so I've never so the way it's happened for us is people visit and then the parents are at the house and then the kids decide they would like to try to have a sleepover. And then inevitably what happens is both kids go to sleep and within a few minutes, whoever is visiting was like, I, I want to stay with the parents. And like it ends in like five, ten minutes. Like every time they're like, we want to have right. a sleepover. So it's, um, so we haven't had a thing where like a kid, like someone has, like, like a kid has stayed over, um, without the parents also visiting does right. that make but, sense but with the idea that the parents are going to leave after you go to sleep no they're oh. like it's like people coming in from out of town so like most oh. of that is like people staying from well, that out of doesn't town. count right and then but like but what i'm saying is i think that little kids like that don't re i think they like the idea of a sleepover and then i think they instantly 
don't want to do it. Yeah. So, um, well, apparently this happened with this girl. Uh, her name's Coco. She, a friend of hers, had a sleepover at her place, and she left. <laughs> you yeah, know? I think kids that age yeah. don't want to be away from their parents yeah. unless there is like a reason, and the like that isn't for fun. You know what I mean? Right. Like I, I, uh, they love that concept and the they idea. They love the concept. But then they when will talk about it. I mean, with I mean, I will look at two children and go, "You will both want to not do this." Mm -hmm. It, like give it a try, but f but if right. you either of you don't want to, feel free to stop. Yeah. Like, and then warning essentially each child that the other may change their mind. Right. The times that I've had it happen, both children, ha well, not really. I guess like Ollie is happy to stay in his own room. Like he's mm -hmm. not like get out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and I can't remember if we've if it's happened at other people's houses where he also. But I think mostly it's that like kids end up wanting to be with their parents at that age, and I haven't seen a kid yet. Right. You know, unless they're older, like maybe older kids. I guess. I don't know when the first day, because Amber asked me when, you know, we were trying to come up with anecdotes. She had one about her, her best friend leaving who lived right across the street and, mm -hmm. uh, and she was crying and angry and all that yeah. stuff. They were trying to, and tried to find, look up some like, you know, cartoon type things that, that dealt with that kind of stuff. Um, and where's Ollie right now? Is he with a babysitter or is he just out on the street waiting? Um, he's, uh, he's, he's with Teresa. He's at school probably. He's at school. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he um, didn't come down. Oh no, he didn't come down. He's not, he's not here. He's, oh. uh, he's in, he's back in oh, Massachusetts. Just, yeah. Yep. yep. In and then back up. And then, yep. Exactly. And it, it's, it's the same sound for traveling down and traveling up, right? That is. And it's just to be clear, the sound is how I travel. I don't, oh. I didn't. People are like, did you take the train? Did you fly? No, I took the sound you just made. You took a. Yep, and that's and then. And yep. to get back, you're gonna get, take a. Exactly. That is. <laughs> that's exactly right. That is okay. exactly right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you? Yeah. I was going to mention. Yep. Uh, the show, the stand-up show. Well, it was sort of stand-up, but stand-up within the. Yeah. The we did Barefoot. a benefit. We what? Barefoot. Barefoot, yeah, we did a we did a benefit, uh, and that was the we were supposed to do it. Well, that was our joke. Do it barefoot. We had all the uh, everybody was on the bill. It was oh, completely eclectic. I'm trying to remember who the benefit was for. I think it was for you too. For we you, we were going to raise money for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, because they were just starting that huge tour. What was the monster mass yeah. the massive tour? Uh, and we were going to try to raise money for yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and we did, we did, we did. you know, uh, I think we raised over like, I mean, $4,800 yeah, yeah. that we were able to send yep. to, to the- um, Right to Adam Clayton. Right to Adam Clayton. And- uh, Yeah. And I it, remember them eating eating the check on live television. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, I thought that was weird, but uh, uh, but it wasn't the real check, you know that, right? Oh, I thought it was the real check. No, they just made, made a, like a- I was wondering why it was so big. Yeah. I was wondering why it was so big. It was, um, huh. no, but seriously, it was, we had, uh, the, we had the uh, bar mitzvah DJ. Yep. Um, and I'm trying to think of who else was on that bill. Uh, cause, and, and you went up as like a fake character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I was, uh, yeah, I was stand up werewolf. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. God, who else werewolf. was on there? And I, I went up as Dr. Smarty Pants. Yep. And then... Uh, uh, yep. And I the, remember Tony Danza was the back of a dragon. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But I can't but that remember was who it. the we front was. The, was. We there didn't a have front? the front. No, no there was, was no that's front. That's right. He was dragon That was the butt. whole thing. He was, he was the butt. back of the dragon. And it was and, like a uh, singing, a song and dance kind of thing. And he yeah. came down. But what was... And he wouldn't say... Uh, we begged him. We begged him. And we're like, this is for charity. He would not say the thing who's the boss we were trying yeah. to get him to say who's the boss i'm yeah, the yeah. boss and yeah, then yeah. and then he we had, kept saying i'm in charge and we're like that's not the yeah that's, that's, not that's the charles thing. and uh, he was just fucking with us because what we wanted was who's the boss i'm the boss and then i had hired the bruce springsteen lookalike to go no i'm the boss and yeah. then play weird al's version of born in the usa yeah which he hadn't written yet no no but uh it exists yes, I mean, yes, I'm, yes. Yeah, that that show was fucking. That was nuts. A very, very nut. Yeah, but hey, we raised money. We was a worthy, funny, worthy cause. What was the cause? It was for uh, you too. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You're the one who you literally just said that. No, I know, I know, I know. Just double checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eugene. What's the funniest thing yeah. you've ever heard? Oh, what's the funniest thing? Did, uh, let me ask you this. Did you uh, prepare for this at all? Um, you know, y y yes and no. In, in the sense that um, you had a list of questions like, what's the best smell or what's the this or that? But I don't actually know what you're going to ask. So I have like, right. like, what, like there was an example of like, what's the... I don't know, maybe scariest dream. What's the... Oh, what's the scariest dream? I think that was the thing you had. Um, oh, I don't know. I think it was like, I uh, like. Uh, I mean, I remember after watching Get Out, like having dreams of people like running right at me. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was spooky. I don't watch a lot of horror movies. Not that it's necessarily horror, but, um, you know, and then things that are just like, yeah, I don't know, scariest, but also like happiest or I don't know. Like, so, so I think I prepared in the sense that like there was examples of like, what's the happiest dream or what's the scariest? Well, we, we can all take a guess what the happiest dream is. Um, I mean, not the specifics, but you know, it's, you end up yes. ejaculating and then you're like, wait, wait, I'm the president. <laughs> and, oh, mine are different. <laughs> it is it is ejaculating into public and then you're like hmm. okay put in public office. Uh, um all right well what's the funniest thing you've ever heard what's the funniest thing i've ever heard you know it's funny i can't i feel like it's something to like it's like john benjamin doing something mm -hmm. and but i i don't know if i can what is the funniest thing God, I don't. I like feel like I have an answer that I can't. All right, we'll take to, if take it, a break if and I'll up, maybe yeah. come back to it. Um, was there ever a? You might not know this, but was there ever a? Um, uh, I remembered. Oh, what is it? S slightly, it is. I believe John Benjamin spending hours pretending to be Chris Noth's agent at like a party. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe even running into him years later. Oh my God, where yes, he I thought. So like, I feel like that might be like that story yeah, of him spending one. hours telling him he's going to take him to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> and like a party that they're like, they're like their agent, like it was at where their agent. Yes. Their agency through. Uh, anyway. Do so you know that, do you know the, uh, not necessarily a story, but do you know his, this whole thing about how this is. 25 years ago, probably, he had convinced uh, Lee Kernis, the manager, uh, who was, I believe, Sam Cedar's manager uh, for years, decades. He had him convinced that he was dating Amy Irving. Wait, who's Amy the, Irving? The actress from uh, many things, but Crossing Delancey. Oh. And it oh. was based on like a kind of a little mistake and John just ran with it and then had this... Had him going for decades that oh, wow. he was dating, dating Ir Amy Amy Irving. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, yeah. I feel like there was another thing that he pretended. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I think it's the things he that he pretends for a long time. Um, one time uh, I was at a doctor's office in Beverly Hills, and there was in the waiting room, uh, there were probably three people i think myself and then this woman who was uh next to me on a couch and then another woman reading magazine and this uh woman who was younger um i'm gonna guess like you know late 20s early 30s is on the phone with her friend mm -hmm. and it's this quiet in the waiting room waiting room except for her going Oh my God. Well, that's not even what I'm, I'm oh, uh, fuck that. No, I'm not going to do that. And oh my God, I went and just that kind of thing with the, and a lot of the up speak and glottal fry and stuff. And she was really annoying and really inconsiderate, I thought. And I somehow I got, I saw her phone number on her phone somehow, or she gave her phone number to somebody. I texted john benjamin who was who was in new york the, i was in la at the time and i texted him i was like hey would you call this woman uh 
she's, I'm at a doctor's office and she's sitting next to me and she's on the phone and she's speaking very loudly and she's annoying and just please tell her to stop and text it to him. And then while I'm sitting there, you know, a minute later, uh, I'm, hang on a second, I'm getting another call. Hello? Excuse me? Uh, I'm sorry, who is this? And it was just that for a while. And and I'm like, you know, I can't laugh or anything. And and also, it's just like, she's saying, <laughs> how the fuck do you know? And uh, and at some point, he revealed that he was in New York. And <laughs> like he can, I, I can't remember the end oh of it. I'll God. ask him when he does the show. But it was really so funny. Really kind of perfect. <laughs> um. God, that guy is fucking funny. It's a, it's, I, I, I mean, I've got some, you know, numerous stories of, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that I have thought about this often. Like it's, it's, I've been very lucky that I haven't gotten the shit beat out of me. Uh, you know, there are a hundred examples, if, if not hundreds, but John Benjamin, you can, triple that amount uh like how has this guy not gotten the shit kicked out of him you know i think because he's so believable that you think you would be attacking your own agent <laughs> well or or whatever the situation is you know one, one time this is not this doesn't have anything to do with you know obnoxious behavior but uh we were at a bar it was I can't remember who it was. It was me, him, and somebody else. And we just, we walked in the bar. It was like the, the magician or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's, he asks us, uh, you know, what we want. And we, you know, say something. He goes, uh, yeah. And the bartender came over. He's like, yeah, can I get a, um, can I get, uh, two Guinness and, uh, and a Pilsner for the little guy. And he called himself the little guy. <laughs> and, and it was the funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, a, and a pilsner for the little guy <laughs> it was just, um, god bless funny. him yeah um was there ever a consideration to call it bob's hamburgers it was out of my hands but i pushed hard <laughs> for bob's hamburgers or bob's burgers um i guess i guess in my in my story hamburgers uh no, I don't know. I don't think there was. I, I think, uh, I don't know what the, I know that originally it was about, uh, it was going to be about a family of cannibals. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, it was originally going to be about a family of can can It's this is true. That's a family of cannibals that ran a burger restaurant. And then, uh, and this is where sometimes like, uh, you know, people from a network of production company have like good suggestions where they were like, sure. Hey, uh, do you want to write about cannibals every week? Yeah. And then I think Lauren was like, no, not, not really. No. I think he just thought, cause he came from sort of an adult swim world that it had right. to be, uh, so like, that's why like the first episode has some stuff about like, I think it's the first, the pilot might be about how like there's jokes about it being human meat, but it isn't, uh, because they were like, let's not make a whole show about cannibals, like yeah, a workplace comedy where people live there. That's good enough. That would wildly alter the, the, it's a beloved show, yeah. and I don't think it would be as beloved. I think everyone agrees, <laughs> which yeah. is why it is not about a family of cannibals that are lovable. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, tough yeah. to do. So, but, yeah. I mean, it's a challenge. Yeah. If anybody could do it, Lauren could do it. Yes. I, do, I think, I do I think, think he, could, he, he could, but he I could think pull it's it off. easier with uh, not focusing on cannibalism everywhere. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, I want to tell everybody uh, that it's so rare that you get to say something like this, what I'm about to say, but um, you and Teresa's wedding was might be the best wedding I've ever been to. Thank you. It was, uh, we stayed an extra day. Yeah, I yeah. tell you that. Yeah. We, it was uh, cool. every bit about it was awesome. And uh, um, and I, I know I told you that there, but even, you know, with the, with time, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's a, it's a, it was just great. Everything about it, you know? Yeah. Thank you. It was, yeah, it was sort of, yeah, it was this neat, like crazy, 
I don't every, know. Every choice you made was was great, I would say. And mm. uh and I think everybody else felt that as well. Um uh and my daughter on her own uh s- went and saw a bunch of horseshoe crabs that had been um beached. Mm. And she went and she got a stick and she turned them over and sent them back into the water. Oh wow. So they were like they were alive still. Yeah. I think <laughs> i'm not sure maybe uh, not maybe not I, I watched this from afar she was by herself yeah, yeah. she i saw her see them and then go to and try them. to help them yeah and try to help them which i really i wouldn't change her story to her but there's a chance they're all dead yeah it could have been uh but i hadn't but really yeah. thought about that yeah yeah well, that's great well i did find a um a dead carcass uh a uh, uh, horseshoe crab um it, and when we were out there and uh uh i mean really dead not like yeah, yeah, yeah. newly dead yeah. uh it, and and i uh i put it on top of the cake i told you that i put it on top of the wedding cake <laughs> did no. i tell you that oh no yeah uh it um, looked real is it is it a horseshoe crab or cake yeah there you go <laughs> meme that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh thanks yeah it was you know like all the different parts were yeah, we're very lovely. Yeah, and uh, beautiful setting. Um, uh, and just uh, again, every choice you made, like it was. Uh, um, I, I don't mean this to sound, uh, you know, uh, flip or, or you know, but it was it was like short and sweet too. It was yeah, like yeah. the perfect amount of time, and uh, and then Tom Kenny was that was probably one of the greatest nights of his life i'm gonna guess um and he was the band for he was the, listening yeah. it's truly like why because yeah. he got everyone <laughs> everyone had him do spongebob <laughs> he, yeah um yeah he, he he fronted the band uh uh and he was going nuts yeah and uh yeah and then the night of country music yeah, really that was fun. great, and my my daughter dancing up a storm with uh, her mom and uh, oh. all the kids, and um, yeah, it was great. You guys should be please, please satisfied. Yeah, happy. we were. Yeah. <sighs> Eugene Merman, David Cross. Is there anything uh, you want to say that hasn't been said? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess we have, well, yeah, who knows? I don't know when this, this comes out. Who knows when? I'd be like, check out my TV show. There's in 2027. I, I think it'll be before 2027. But like in like, but you think in like several months? Yeah. Or, I think oh, it'll okay. be like, uh, um, is like, what, what do you, what do y'all think? Yeah. So should I just months. say that I have like will the record label stuff be on here or should we talk about that or should I mention it? Yeah, of course. A- any anybody coming up that you're going to sign or re- do a um project with? I think that there's like various people that we're like sort of talking to but this is like Glazer's what w- maybe is out. Mm-hmm. Um I do, yeah. Can um, I uh yeah. recommend a few people? Yes. Throw some names out there? Definitely. Uh uh, Russell Brand, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, mm-hmm. Seinfeld. Yeah, he's Ste- uh, same same. What I'm thinking of, or a different guy with the. Uh, he's like you know, brick yeah, yeah. background. Like, what's the deal with? Yep. Yeah, I would do uh, if it, if he had like an album, but it's all sock jokes, like meditations on socks. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. Um, what about? Uh, uh, the Capital Steps. I, now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Those other ones were silly suggestions, like, yeah, but the like, Capital Steps. I don't know who from that is alive, mm-hmm. but but you don't think there's like a third generation of Capital Steps that just tour keeps around? Doing, yeah. Oh, like, like Gallagher Tuba Capital st- Steps. Yeah, just like whatever they. Uh, I mean, those things are so easy. You just insert different. You know, whoever the senator is do, at the time. Just like an album that fucking sticks it to LBJ. <laughs> like we're gonna get it'll be Von, like a radio Von, play. Von Meter is that the yeah, guy's yeah. name? Yeah, I think there's <laughs> just like so many of those old records where it's like, 
But it was also like at a time when there were three channels and then the only record entertainment was like, yeah, weird, like political and, community theater. Or like uh, it's you don't have like uh, the idea that a guy na- like Rich Little was massive and yeah. he just did impressions and the jokes were meh. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, like you don't hear impressionists. It's like so when you go to comedy clubs, there's not, uh, you don't see too no. many. I mean, I remember seeing when headliners. I first started out, like impressionists yeah. in Boston, but it was oh, also man. like impressionists who would like, they wouldn't, like sometimes people who do impressions work impressions into like a cohesive story, but sometimes they're just like, what if Bill Clinton brought you a pizza? This is what it'd be like. And you're exactly. like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> well, Louis, Louis had the best, uh, this is like, back in the 80s but louis had the best <laughs> impression of uh like when a guy goes up there who's does impressions but has no material like there was a guy at catch who would do the open mics and uh he would do uh it was the wizard of oz mm-hmm. and it was dorothy was i i might i, I don't know yeah. if i got this exactly dorothy was uh edith bunker mm-hmm. and the lion was, who knows, Jack Nicholson and whatever. And it yeah, would, yeah, yeah. and it would jo- sort of do like uh, sixty seconds of them talking, and then, and Louis would be in the back, and he would go, "Yes, that's very accurate." <laughs> <laughs> Man, we could be, we could be so vicious to the really shitty, persistent open micers. I think if you did it one, two, three times, nobody really. Gave you any shit, but if you were there like night after night, week after week, month after month, never wrote a new thing and just kept, and we just kept pushing, pushing yeah. your same. There, there was a guy, I don't remember his name, and he 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 got work too. Um, I think his name was Rick something. He was from New Hampshire, and he would he would have a um, he would wear. You might remember him because uh, uh mm-hmm. might have overlapped. He wore yep. a large red sweater. That was like a little too big for him, Uh but not comically big. And then he would, his like first two minutes, I would say, was about this dumb sweater. His wife got him and all this. And you're like, when you you see it like the ninth time, like, well, don't wear the sweater. Like, stop wearing (laughs) Wearing, the sweater. Wear a different sweater. (laughs) 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 It was the same thing every time. Like, can you believe the sweater? (laughs) You're like. All right. Yes. Um, Eugene, I like to uh, wrap things up. Sure. With a question from my daughter. And yeah. um, she has this question specifically for you. I told her I was going to, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll, Ali's dad. And uh, I remember we went to the wedding. And mm-hmm. So I have, uh, this is, she, this is a question from Marlo to you. Mm-hmm. Um. Why is soap slippery? Marla wants to know why is soap, and she wants you to tell her why soap is slippery. <sighs> oh. I, I swear to God, we were walking back from the playground last night. Oh, and she's like asking for real why is soap slippery? Yeah, and I said, hey, I'm, uh, uh, she knows because I get questions from her and she knows yeah. I'm doing, she doesn't know what a podcast is. She wants is. like a silly answer or a real answer? That totally up to you. Okay. You know, um, um you can give her an answer. Well, the real silly. answer is obviously God makes it slippery. <laughs> and then the silly answer. <laughs> that's the easy. You that's just, the real one if, you, if, she got, if she's got to know. I love, love that is just an uh, easy way to shut your kid up. Because it's because of God. Yeah. Like all the questions she has. God, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. I don't know. Why? God wants it. Yeah, like, exactly. Like before it'd be like, why, why, why? And now you're like, God, 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 God. Yeah. And then otherwise it's probably because it got wet, I'm assuming. Uh. With like uh, milk. I think she puts it in milk. Um, what? Milk. Not to eat, but just like it's wet. It's wet. It got wet. Slippery yeah, but that, cream. I mean, I think she wants something a little more scientific than that. If you're going to go serious. Oh, uh, you, well, I think they were both, they were the two sides of the God answer. <laughs> uh, I think. Oh, so God, you're being serious. You do think God made soap. Even though soap is a man-made product, <laughs> God made the soap slippery. I think the same do way you think that God the- created free will. You think this? You think the way that soap is slippery is the same way that we have free will? <laughs> is that what you're saying? I, I, I think I'd really like to stick with that answer. <laughs> um, yeah, because because otherwise, because here's my choice. Uh, I go like because it's wet and wet molecules are slippery. Like I don't know. I don't really know 
like other than like it's wet and it probably starts dissolving and then as a result it's squishy and you keep putting it in the thing and it keeps falling in the sink like i don't i don't really have a great answer so i'd rather as all people lead on religion and like well if i can't answer that it's god that's that's your go-to to a child and then as they once they hit 15 i'll i'll i switch because it's uh ghosts <laughs> okay now uh i'm not going to allow marlo to listen to any of these until she's 15 so what are you what do you have to say to 15 year old marlo hi by the way yeah. um in answer to her question why is soap slippery um, remember she's 15 she's 15 years old uh you know i think ghosts give teenagers and this is just how life works impure thoughts and those impure thoughts mm -hmm. uh moisten soap <laughs> do you have to be near the soap or just do all soap wherever it is just gets it, if it's moistened in a, and if slippery it's in a bathroom, when, a, when a teenager it has to be has... in a bathroom it, it okay. won't work even in a kitchen oh yeah so the so when soap soap it, is never wet in a kitchen so when soap is slippery in the kitchen, yeah. it's because there's a teenager nearby who is having impure thoughts. In the bathroom. In a kitchen, it's, it's because of just the water. Oh, I see. There's a distinction. So in the uh, kitchen soap needs... That's for like cleaning. Well, what's the other soap for? <laughs> I don't know. The soap in the bathroom? To, I'd have to ask Marlo that. The soap in the bathroom. What is the soap in the bathroom for? That like, uh, it's uh, just fragrance. Just I've been using it to clean this whole time. No. Literally, my hands, uh, my my taint, you know, all everything, up and down, all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what? I've thought more about what you said, and I think it's for cleaning across the board. Yeah, but the, you're. I think you made a distinction between. Uh, I think. Kitchen I think soap it's just that the. Soap. Yeah, I think that that it's all for cleaning. Sorry, let me clarify. Okay. Soap in bathrooms. Mm -hmm is slippery mm -hmm. because ghosts put impure thoughts into teenagers. Okay. Soap is wet in kitchens because solely because of cleaning. Both are used for cleaning, but the way they be that the soap becomes slippery, not just wet, but slippery. Right, right, right. That's in a the key. bathroom. That's the key here. Is, okay. Is ghost the and I don't know if you would even say malicious because it's really just part of growing up. So I don't think the ghosts are even malicious. I think they're just like, here's they're, some thoughts. They're benign. They're they're benign, but they just help you discover it's just, it's what they and do. eventually go to art school, I would hope. Or whatever. Like graphic design. Like something practical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Eugene Merman, thank you so much thank you. for uh for being a guest on Senses Working Over Time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me have you. You're welcome. And so it goes. And so it goes. That was a headgum podcast.